now is Ohio Democratic Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. She is also the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, and her district includes Columbus. Congresswoman Beatty, good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much, Joshua, for having me on your show. How's President Biden doing so far in terms of racial equity? We know that it's early, but he made it very clear that black people have been a huge part of his political successes. Obviously, he's focusing more on more than just the African-American community, but how's it look so far? Well, we are very pleased with the what he's doing thus far, uh, words matter, and so do actions. And he's taken great actions, as you know, with his rollout, where he has launched a program with racial equity and justice throughout all of his agencies and cabinet departments. He's also rescinded what Trump put into action to deny diversity and inclusion training in federal contracts. And then when we look at health care and we look at housing, certainly where we know black Americans are disproportionately affected. One in five renters and one in 10 homeowners are at risk. He was able to launch a program to help them. When we look at the number one killer right now, COVID-19, and how black Americans, again, are disproportionately affected. We make up 13 percent of the national population, but our death rate with this virus is something like 18 and 20 percent. So I think he is off to a, a good start. Uh, we have pledged to work with him, but more importantly, he has pledged to work with the Congressional Black Caucus as well. Not to mention uh, Susan Rice, the former ambassador, leading up a domestic policy leadership council where the racial justice and equity will come under her jurisdiction. Having former Congressman Cedric Richmond there as a leader, senior advisor to him, and a number of other uh, black Americans, not to mention, uh, hopefully, this coming week, uh, Marsha Fudge, Congresswoman, will be confirmed as the Secretary of HUD. So I think we're off to a good start in his 100-day uh, rollout and commitment. So we will continue to work with him and see how we reset the clock. Got a similar question for you as we had for the councilwoman from Boston who's running for Boston mayor in terms of how you balance all of these priorities. I know that the Congressional Black Caucus has not surprisingly been kind of tearing its hair out for the last four years trying to work with the Trump administration. Now there's a president that's much more sympathetic. You also have Americans who are saying, I need COVID relief right now. I have no job. I can't feed my children. I have, I'm not sure whether or not we're going to make it through this winter, let alone the rest of the year. Racial equity is important to me, but I need to feed my kids right now. How do you balance these different priorities legislatively? You can work on lots of bills at once. You can only bring one to the House floor at a time. How do you make all this balance? Well, I think the first thing is we start with the pandemic. And I always like to say it's a three-headed pandemic. And it gets to your economic question. It's not only the health care, it is the economic and it is the injustices. And while you can bring one bill at a time, I think it has to be inclusive of a multiplicity of things, like what we're doing in the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. And I think President Biden was very good in his rollout to be very inclusive on the economic end. If you put forbearances for mortgages, if you halt renters from being evicted, and the additional 15% in food for SNAP. And then when you also look at the additional dollars that he has put in because we have so many food insecurities that that, that families will have an additional $100 every two months. So I think we have to do it in a rollout that's all-inclusive. We cannot just say health care and not include the economics, to not include giving the additional relief packet. And that's why he calls it a relief packet, because there are dollars in there for those families in need. If I could ask you briefly before we have to go, I wonder what your sense is of the mood inside Congress right now. There's been a lot made in the last few days of Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Republican from Georgia, who has been a supporter of QAnon and a number of very wild conspiracy theories. Some have said they don't feel safe around her. Freshman Congresswoman Cori Bush from St. Louis has moved her staff away from Congresswoman Green's office because apparently they were office neighbors. What is your sense of how Congress is doing right now? In addition to trying to get stuff done, just kind of looking over their shoulders and wondering about the people that they're working with before I got to let you go. 
It certainly has complicated it. I talked with Congresswoman Bush earlier today. She is being moved. But here's the thing. We have someone like Congresswoman Green in there who should not be in Congress. The things that she's saying are things that certainly I will support the pieces of legislation from Congresswoman Nakima Williams and also Congresswoman Cory Bush and many other of my colleagues outside of the Congressional Black Caucus because there should be no tolerance for her behavior. She's unfit to be serving in this Congress. And certainly those things that she's saying certainly don't make sense, but words do matter, actions do matter, but we're not going to be bullied or run away from it. We're gonna deal with it head on. Speaker Pelosi has been uh, out in front with this, and certainly the Congressional Black Caucus will be continuing the fight. That is the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty of Ohio. Congresswoman, good to have you on tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's stick with Georgia. Speaking of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Republican politicians there, as you know, Georgia turned.